Okay. So before we will start, okay, magsta mag of prayer. Okay, simple. Wait lang for a while, ha? Okay, meron ko i-open nga document. Okay, so let us pray first in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we praise and glorify your name. We thank you for the gift of life and the keep, a gift of people. We hope and pray that you send forth your Holy Spirit and enlighten each one of us. Help us to learn from each other um, as we continue with our lesson for uh, this evening. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so once again, good evening everyone. It's been a while since we had our synchronous class, no? Uh, like what I've said last time, uh, we had um, several holidays and then last week. So I gave you an activity. I already checked your activity for those who weren't able to submit. You, you still can, but syempre since uh, ko ano man, no? Uh, naghatag naman ta deadline and then di man mo kamit sa deadline so na na yung mga few deduction of scores lang per please no uh, if you can submit on time the better so hapit naman ato ang prelim I think it's on September 26 to 28 make sure that those who are with missing activities I wasn't able to bring my class record but for those who have uh, missing activities so you can uh comply no kato sa to ang first first nga learning insight later na ko magpa quiz syempre after na sa ko ang discussion run so you will start for uh, you will have to comply with that one first so that wala may ma miss out so when i compute your grades together with your prelim exam scores at least makadungag-dungag na lang siya ha please lang ko students i will still allow you to submit but again given nga uh, your submissions are delayed or um late so, na na siya yung mga deduction of, at least few points lang. Di mo siya naka drastic na tag 5 points should, no? Saki mga 1 or 2 points lang. Pero still, it can make a difference sa inyong hanga grade. So, anyway, let me just share my screen. So, I know we weren't able to have a synchronous discussion on our lesson 1. So I just gave you a recording of the class so that you can watch and then answer the activity after. So this time, we will have a synchronous class on chapter or lesson 2, the history of tourism. So again, to give you an idea, first, mag history of tourism ta, followed by the history of hospitality management like what I've sa said just a while ago. The hospitality and tourism industry has separate um, history and then you will know also the different pioneers of the hospitality and tourism industry these pioneers actually help build the foundation of our industry you know i think you already know people like rich carlton nila, sila ni Marriott, sila thomas cook uh, we will also be uh, uh, discussing about thomas cook now thomas cook is actually the father of the travel agency um, he was the one who first made uh, tour itineraries to cater to the needs of tourists traveling outside of their place of residence, which we already established is the meaning of tourism. So we will start from the very beginning. Uh, but before that, let me communicate first to you the learning objectives. So you'll be able to uh, explain the historical changes which have affected the growth and development of the tourism industry. And after this chapter, you'll be able to describe the international travel patterns. And then the third one, you'll be able to identify the factors that favor the growth of tourism. We will start first with early tourism. 
So the term tourism was used in the as early as the 19th century actually. Tourism is not a new thing anymore. It's been existing for many years now. And tourism is actually derived from the Hebrew word Torah, which means studying, learning, and searching. Tourism can be traced back in the Old Testament in the time of Noah. If you can remember the story of Noah class, di ba katong nagdala siya sa mga animals by pair uh, so that when they transfer to new lands after the Great Flood, they can multiply, no? Siyempre, no? Kay by, by pair man. So, uh, that was some form of tourism. Although, maghulog man siya o evacuation or they were refugees basically during that time. Pero, um, they were actually searching for dry land and safe land to settle down. So, early tourism during uh, those times has two forms. Unlike today, we know tourism as some form of travel, any travel as long as you're not earning money and as long as it's for leisure or pleasure purposes. But way back in early tourism, sa karaan pa nga panahon class, ay ito, if you can understand karaan, no, kaya since bisaya man siya. So, sa daan pa nga panahon, no, um, you have travel for business, such as trading and religious travel. So, it was the merchants who uh, traveled from their uh, town to another town to, let's say, uh, wala pa to na na invented or nahimo ang currency before so uh, what they did is they they bartered no trading sila uh, for like silk or cloth ibaylo niya og lain na pod nga item and then also people traveled for religious purposes no um, wala pa nabot diri ang crusades no usually for mga pilgrimages ra man siya no like for example sa muslim no it is believed that at least once in their lifetime they have to travel to mecca that that will complete their life's journey in our religion it is not really uh, an obligation that we travel to the holy land but it's some some, some fort uh, some forms or some form of of pilgrimage po na siya when we go to a religious place and when we reflect okay so other people would would do religious travel because either like Jesus Christ no but kinsa ang mga katoliko dire so uh, religious travel like Jesus Christ would tend to travel from one town to another proclaiming the good news of the Lord and then mag heal siya og mga sick people o oh, mamato sa una no ang iyahang mga travels and then sa uban pod nga namatay na si Jesus ang mga religious travel before is to seek places of worship temples ba na siya or mosque and then or mosques no so dira na sila mag pray okay or music or reflection and then there's also travel for private purposes for example you have the olympic games and travel for enjoyment so before mag travel dyan na uglayo ang mga spectators just to visit greece okay so they had they had Olympic Games for men. It's a test of strength. No, na mga like shot put or javelin throw. And then, more na witness sa mga spectators. Mara po ka ng kita karun ba? No, continue lang nato ang kan ang tradition na um, different countries would compete with one another. So, so naga exist na na ang Olympics class. No, pero sa osa lang siya ka country. And then, people would just go there to, to watch no, and to spectate. Also, pag sa unang mga gambling-gambling, no? Like sa mga Roman empires, they gamble on uh, gladiators. Kinsa to'y mamatay. O mag-bet sila nun niya. Like sa Koan, sa UK, usually uh, horse races. Okay? So, people travel just to witness horse races, make, make bets, no? Or mga sugal. Uh, it's some form of gamble man Japan. Okay, let's now, let us now proceed to tourism in the medieval period. During this period, travel declined. So, this is before the Renaissance. No, the Renaissance was the rebirth uh, of Europe. No, and then, there na nag, nagawas ang mga, mga different artists. No, and then you have like 
different um, works of literature and art nga nanggawas because it was the rebirth. But um, in, before that, no, before Pasa- Renaissance and Elizabethan era, there were a lot of dark times, no, because ato nga time pod class daghan kaayo og mga empires nga musik nga to expand their colonies or to expand their empire itself, no. So mo na nga magsiginag agto from town to town, they invade pa on as part of their uh, colony or pa on as part of their empire, as part of their land. So mo na because of the war, uh, travel declined, and it was very. Um, unsafe for people to travel during during those times. Now, there was a new word that uh, emerged, you know, from this time, like travel. So travel uh, was first mentioned during this time, and it was derived from the word from the word travel. After the decline of the Roman Empire in the fifth century, roads were not maintained and they became unsafe. So due to war, mga power, uh, tripping, no, um, so nagfall man ang empire sa mga Romans. That is when thieves, daghan kay mga kawata, no. Kaya usually basta war ganit class, mawadan og livelihood ang mga tao, yung ang uban nilang mga properties kay kwaon siya sa katong nadaog nga nga empire, and then mahimog spoils of war. Ang spoils of war or kanang kwaon na siya mga nakuha nimo or napusas nimo sa la, sa kontra nimo nga city or town because of the war okay unya ang mga tawo nga na, nakuaan og mga property nakuaan og mga uh, kagamitan because of the war they resort into stealing and kanang mga thieves nga kinahanglan sila manginabuhi day by day because of uh, it it was no longer um, a safe place to live so they inflicted harm to those who traveled so nang hold up sila eh, no and because of this wala ni mga merchants mo travel kay ang ilang mga gipangdala sa ilahang para a barter or a trade nila sa lain nga lugar ginapangkawat man ya gina hold up pa sila ginapatay pa so mo na ang people during that time especially merchants um they decided not to travel at all so nag decline ang travel aning time so no one during this time, traveled for pleasure. Wala ining laag, wala ining uh, travel for barter or for trade. Ang katurang na travel are crusaders and pilgrims, those who travel for the sake of religion. Now, pilgrims were different than crusaders class. Ha? Pilgrims are basically people who seek um, places of worship to reflect. They're basically harmless. Ang crusaders, they fight for Catholicism and I am a Roman Catholic I do not uh, I, I am not really uh, kanang mag-ingani sa kaning crusades kay marag, it's a very wrong kind of action nga mga knights sa una mo mo patay sila o kanang mga kontra for the sake of of the church for the sake of religion which is not good at all so dagang kay bloodshed ana because of the crusades kay syempre mga kontra sa mga crusaders mga muslims biya syempre lang lain biya tag mga beliefs so ato nga time no gailuganay sila og city og towns nga kay kwa man no ang for example this is a muslim town used to be full of christians nya ila na pun nang awayon kay para mabawi nila ang kana nga town balik no so it was during those times so only crusaders who fought for the church and pilgrims traveled. Okay. So right after the dark times, right after tourism in the medieval period, nga dili na siya safe, nga decline na ang travel, we now have the tourism during the Renaissance and Elizabethan eras. So with the Renaissance, a few renowned universities developed so that travel for education was introduced largely by the British. So it was during this time that edu tourism, so it's simply taking the word education, combining it with tourism, so edu tourism became popular. So sa ato akaron ang form of edu tourism na to. Yes, Jean Paul, do you would you like to ask a question? Napindot lang, Miss. Sorry. 
Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. So, when we talk about edutourism, ang, ed- ang form of edutourism... Yes, Clarence? Uh, may ask of mess nga si Glinda mess na brand o si Labalay mess. Um, hindi sa kasulod sa online class subong. Ah, okay. Um, kindly take note na lang sa GC ha so that Um, when I call uh, the attention, uh, when I call your name after sa attendance checking, I will just put letter E on uh, sa side si name para excused. Same as thank you. Okay, uh, let us continue. Okay, so um other concerns that are not uh relate uh for example after sa class I will entertain them ha. Okay, so now let us proceed to. Uh, uh, edu tourism. So there, there were a lot of forms of edu tourism, um, and it started during the Renaissance and Elizabethan era. So when you talk about the Renaissance, it's the rebirth. Then na nag-emerge ang mga artists, mga um, different forms of literature, and then diri na ni ang kanang mga like lang Picasso. Now, I'm not really that of an expert sa art. I mean, I do admire art. It's beautiful. I enjoy going to museum tours. Um, but dili kiko yung anak ako sa sa mga artist no dili pud for club pero mag enjoy ra ka ba kay kanang mag admire ka silang artistry so anyway um with the renaissance no many are rebirth no? nalang mga nag emerge ang beautiful art beautiful works of literature and then during the elizabethan era and renaissance dira na nag give importance ang education education for tourism uh, or edu tourism So sa to a karon ang form of edu tourism na to karon is like field trips. That's edu tourism because when we go to another uh, city, another place, and then we when we do museum tours or when we do university tours, that's an example of edu tourism because it's educational. You will learn something from it at the same time you are traveling. Okay, so um. It became popular in the 16th century and under Elizabeth I, young men seeking positions in her court were encouraged to travel the continent to widen their education. This simply means, class, that during the time of Elizabeth I, she values education greatly that she she decided na if you want to serve my court, katong mga lalaki lang ka, syempre, dili pa man equal ang uh, dili pa man equal ang pag-treat sa babay o sa laki during that time. No, women were taught how to do household chores before. And then, ang mga lalaki sa unad, they were the ones who have all the privileges. Sila yung makaskwila, sila yung makasikog position, enter politics. Not unless if you are uh, in royalty, no? Kanang murag ipanganak na dyan ka sa, ko, ano, sa royal family ka. Even if you are a female, you can still have power. Sorry, kaban ha sa mo ang iro. Wait lang. Okay, sorry. Um, di should malik kaya, no? Basta na sa balay. Anyway, um, so, para kay Queen Elizabeth, no? If young men would like to serve her court, ka nang marag part sa young government, or makaservisyo sa under sa... Di mo siya matagawa government, no? Kay kuan man dahil siya. Um... Dili man na government ang tawag sa ilaha, no? So, sorry ka ba na? So, um, sa iyaha nga time, no, if you want to serve under her court, um, under her regime, you have to make sure nga... Can you mute your microphone? Daniela. Can you microphone? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let us continue. So, for Queen Elizabeth, no, kung ginahan ka nga naakay position sa iyaha nga uh, kingdom or kung ginahan ka makaserve under sa queen, you have to travel all around the continent of Europe. So, it's not just one country, ha. When we talk about the continent of Europe, ibuok dyan siya nga Europe containing all of their countries. And then, Uh, once after that you have traveled, um, or after that you have your formal education, so you will complete a grand tour of all the cultural centers of the continent, which will last for three years. So, ma travel ka sa tibuok continent no to widen your education. 
and then magpili ra na no si Queen Elizabeth ang suggest nga mga cultural centers located all throughout Europe nga dira ka mag-travel and that will last up to 3 years so that once you come back mahumana ka sa imong education you will be educated well refined knowledgeable sa lain-lain nga mga practices ang mga um mga different na cultures and lain na country and you can apply that one once you serve the queen mura gud nag satu up di ba klase ba ngano mag OJT man ta para naatay idea what it's like in the real world before we graduate and when we graduate we are ready already to face the real world so saya ha mura pud na shogging ana but it's far more broad no kay syempre mo mo abroad ko ka for 3 years it's not like 600 hours lang nga makaya ni mong 2 months pero sa iyaha is grand tour jud sya tuyo ko ni mo tibok Europe know the people their culture be part of their politics and then you come back to Great Britain and then when you serve the queen's court you are knowledgeable refined no um Noble Mahanjuka worthy nga kabalo katanan nga unsay naa sa uban nga countries like in France or for example in Belgium, in Switzerland, no katong mga anak nga countries around Europe. So mura po yung educational tour no if it were to happen in our time. So while apparently in the 16th century educational tourism was popular, somehow the appeal became social. So when edutourism became so popular, dili na siya lang limited for um, for seeking positions or as a requirement for you to serve the queen, nahimo na siya po og for leisure purposes. So, kamadugayan, na po yung nga mga young men and katong privileged women nga kita nga, ay, it's also enjoyable to travel all around Europe. Kaya dili lang siya for educational purposes, malingaw po ka, no? Um, you will also enjoy the travel. So that's why pleasure-seeking young men of leisure um, traveled all around through France and Italy to enjoy the cultures and social life of Europe. And they are not doing this to earn a position in the Queen's Court. They are just merely doing this to enjoy. Okay? And then by the end of the 18th century, the practice has become institutionalized for the upper class of society. What do we mean by institutionalized? This means that mura na siya nahimo siya og tradition or if you're rich it's like a rite of passage nimo mura ka nang dili jud na mahimo nga dili ko maka tour sa tibuok Europe uh, given nga I'm part of the upper class bagi ana na ang ilang mindset na at the end of the 18th century so it started in the Elizabethan era as a requirement for you to serve the queen if you can still remember like what I uh, just like what I've said a while ago, and eventually it became as travel for the sake of pleasure. And up until now, makita man Japan na ni mo nga exist Japan siya all throughout Europe with U Rail, di ba? Ang U Rail is basically um a train. Oh, okay, U Rail good. It's a, it's a train that you get to travel all around Europe depending on your U Rail card. So, if you get to travel throughout all the continents, or let's say, uh, five countries lang in Europe, so you have the U-Rail card, and you get to travel wherever, uh, whichever nga country that you would like to choose. So, maragilan nang nadala until karun. So, as young men sought intellectual improvement in the continent, the sick sought a remedy for their illnesses in spas. So, kung ang mga dato, nga privileged men, nga gusto makakuhag position, and serve the queen, they travel all around the continent of Europe for for intellectual improvement. Ang mga masakiton pod class, no, they went and sought spas no, to cure their illnesses. So, ang sama niyang spa? The spa came from the Waldun word espa, meaning fountain. So, for them, they are seeking the fountain of youth, baron, or fountain of health. Now, once they take a bath in these fountains, maayo ilahang sakit. It was very, kuan sa una, no? Um, wala pa ng mga physicians sa una. Actually, na, may mga doctors, pero dili ing ana, kaayo, kakuan ng uban, no? Especially katong mga less privileged. They would travel instead and look for espas where they can bathe and then be healed, no? 
Then later, nakabantay man pud ang mga people around them. So, grabe no, businessman kay mindset ang mga locals, those who live near spas or fountains. Dili spa nga atong nabalan karon ha. Ang ato ang manggong na-familiarize ng spa karon class. Or nowadays, or basically, ka na dyong i-massage, or ka nang, for example, ikuha ni muhang feet, or imuhang face, no? Maring ano, ano, therapy, therapeutic ka ayo siya. So, sa una, ang spas are just like water holes, ka nang marasyag small pond, na dira ka mag-bathe, or it's just a fountain, na overflowing water, na dira maligo ang mga tao para maayo. Okay? So, muna sa una, dili ka itong maghigda ka da yun. I-massage yung likod sa masahista or kanang ikuwani mong face, no? i-massage, tanan. Dili na siya yung anak sa una. So, soon nakabantay man ang mga locals who are living near spas or fountains. Nga people kept on coming in because maybe it, it was truly a healing fountain. Uh, or nindo siya nga spring no? because um, the spring can, can heal sickness. So, nakarelease sila nga daghag mo visit og spas for healing. They added entertainment near the watering places or spas and then accommodation hangtod later on nahimo siya resort hotels. So, the resort hotels like Shangri-La, sa QC na, Shangri-La, or ang sa pangyan ng Usagani. So, na Hilton ba na sa una, karang lahi na na ang pangalan ron sa Cebu. So, kanang mga beach resorts Kanagika na siya actually from spas that were added with entertainment and accommodation. Sabi na kita nila udaghan mo ka ayoga travel there is a spas no. Why not we capitalize it? Okay, take advantage of it. We will have accommodation so katung nag travel og layo na sila place to rest or botatag entertainment so that they can do also other things other than just taking a bath in spas. So mo na siya. Th uh, that happened during the Renaissance together with Edu Tourism, no? Sa Elizabethan era. Uh, let us now proceed to Tourism in the Industrial Revolution. So, the Industrial Revolution brought major changes in the scale and type of tourism development. The increase in productivity Regular employment and growing urbanization gave more people motivation and opportunity to go on holiday. So it was actually during this time that agriculture, um, dili na kaya mo main source of of a livelihood nila because in the industrial revolution dili na ni ang mga machines, factories, um, dili na nag start na padulong na po maghimo sa railway system steamboats, steamships. So, sa una, kay agriculture man na o farming ang main source of livelihood, but with new infrastructures and the need to innovate na anay mga machines, aning industrial revolution. And because of industrial revolution, there was a lot of employment because they need people to man these machines. And when there are regular employment, people were given jobs to manage these machines or to work in factories to build infrastructures it gave them more or additional extra income to go on a holiday or to spend for leisure time yes daniela oh wait sorry i i am not able to unmute you kay oh, let us proceed to modern tourism so, uh, we will be discussing two centuries here, tourism in the 19th century under modern tourism and tourism in the 20th century. So, there were two technological developments in the early part of the 19th century that had a great effect on the growth of tourism. These were the introduction of the railway and the development of steam power. So, eventually, you know, when industrialization happened, so, steam power and railway eventually will follow. And the railways created not only more businesses by providing reliable and cheap transportation, kaya it's easy to transport people and goods kaya instead of like mga chariots, adil chariots, sorry, carriages or coaches, uh, ang maoy 
uh, pulled by horses ang mga oy gigamit as means of transportation, dugay pa maabot, kapoyon pa ang kabayo at the same time fuel lang ang makarga, but with trains and steamship, uh, st- uh, steamship, it's easier to transport um huge number of people and then at the same time also cargo. Okay? So it also provide not so not only no nga ang transportation or railroads provide reliable and cheap transportation. It can also provide competition as various private companies invested in hotels, resorts and entertainment facilities. So ngano diri naman ni, ning boom ang hospitality industry although we are talking still talking about tourism. Since the introduction of the railway and development of steam power, it's easy to transport people. So, it would give an opportunity for a lot of people, let's say, 20 to 50 to 100 people to travel at the same time at um, a faster speed. Di pa kapuyun, no? Kayo, dili naman kabayo. At the same time, people nga who used to travel by foot, uh, if, if they can afford the the ticket no sa train makasakay sila an na didali ra sila maabot okay it's quicker for them to reach their destination and with that no people were more encouraged to travel because it's very convenient na to travel dili na maglakaw dili na magsakay og horse na anay railway and a train, daghan pa jud mi makuan so I can bring my family with me those places nga maagian sa train, nga wala pa na ko naagtuan before tungod layo, it's possible now because there are trains and because of that, when people saw that a lot of other people were also traveling to their city or let's say, in my city mingo pa kayo sa una, mga merchants ray gaagto, but with the introduction of the railway, daghan na kaayog mga uh, tourist coming from nearby towns or cities nga muagto sa ako ang lugar because it's easier for them na to travel and once they go in my place maglisod na sila asa sila matulog kay malingaw na sila suri suri di ba asa man sila mukaon so with that no people also just like spas they take advantage with this no they take advantage at the same time they capitalize on this so they built more they build more hotels resorts and entertainment facilities to cater to visitors who come from nearby cities and towns. All thanks to transportation, railway, steam power in the 19th century. So the use of steam power provided the increased mobility needed by the tourism business. Tourism became organized in the later years of the 19th century and the organization of travel became an established institution. And because of this, dagan kay mag travel, dagan nag means of transportation, uh, a lot of travel organizers emerge. The first travel organizer was Thomas Cook. So because of Thomas Cook, na natay mga tour and travel agencies karun. So, unsa man ni ang travel organizer? So, wala pa ng mga travel agent o tour operators class. Travel organizers pa ang tawag nila. These travel organizers will prepare your itinerary. Okay, what is an itinerary? No, I-T-I-N-E-R, uh, N-A-R-Y, itinerary. Ang itinerary is a list of activities that you will do when you reach a specific city nga imuhang kadtuan. And then, na uh, time, pila ka minutes per destination. And sometimes, my, my price pa, no, if ever nga, dili siya part of the tour package. So, they organize it- itineraries, provide you with information about the, the, these places. Pila po ang plate pa dulong dira, pila ay mong magasto if you book this. Um, Asa na siya malukit. So, muna ay lang ginabuhat before. Which is until now, muna siya po yung ginapractice sa tour and travel agencies. So, it was because of Thomas Cook that this happened, no? Dira na introduce ang travel agency. So, si Thomas Cook, the first travel organizer, organized his first excursion train trip no, between Leicester and Lowborough in 1841. And with him are 570 passengers at around trip fare of one shilling. 
So he basically took initiative and said, I will organize this tour, knowing that some tourists do not really know where to go and what to do once they go to a nearby town. So I will organize their trip, inform them of the fare or pliti sa train uh, going to Lowborough from Leicester. And imagine he has with him 570 passengers and siya lang usa. So in 1866, Cook organized his first American tour because it was later known that his excursions were so popular, a lot of tourists were actually uh, demanding his services. So he extended his services in travel sa America. In 1874, Cook introduced circular notes which were accepted by banks, hotels, shops, and restaurants. On so many more circular notes. Take for example, if you are from the Philippines, syempre you have Philippine peso. Now, during those times, wala man tay, um, foreign exchange, sa tawag na, money changer, may ngana, no? Convert imong cash sa currency sa lugar ng imong gigantuan. So, when you go to America and you need US dollars, you won't be able to find a money changers a money changer because it does not exist pa atong a time. So, to solve this problem, especially for international travel, Thomas Cook, the first travel organizer, developed or introduced circular notes. Kaning circular, circular notes, marala silag mga check class. So, for example, if I'm going to the States, I do not have US dollars with me, I will just ask how much in dollars do I owe the hotel. And then I write the amount in the circular note, mga check and I give it to the hotel. The hotel will, will go to an accredited bank. Bank nga ka itong makabaylo ka, no? maka-exchange kasi mong circular notes. And they will exchange the circular note with money. Okay? Siyempre, money nga kakatong US dollars. So, muna siya ang arrangement before. Because money changers did not exist yet. And... Karun gani class no uso na gani karun ang uh, paying online no either through your GCash, PayMaya, unsa pa man mga lain ni mong uh, means of paying that you can also do internationally o through bank transfer may ana So other tour companies emerged such as Dean and Dawson Polytechnic Touring Association and Frames. In the U.S., American Express was founded by Henry Wells and William Fargo. So, during this time, put in the um, 20th, oh, no, sorry, 20th century, so guidebooks which dealt with both local and overseas travel were sold to tourists. So, what are guidebooks? Guidebooks are basically um, just a hard copy of the website. No, currently we use website man to digitize everything. So, in in the guidebook, there will be provided like a map where are the best places to go. Yung say mga available ng mga hotels pila ang ilahang room rates, mga schedule o plate sa train or steamboat. So, everything, no? All of the details necessary, even restaurants, part of the guidebook, where to eat, pila ang usually nga uh, price sa ilahang food dito. All the details that you need to know in your travel was uh, provided in the guidebook. Okay? So, sa karun, na na siya, no? Okay, we have the website already. The website can provide all of the necessary de details about your travel. I'm sorry, 19th century. Dito. Let's now proceed to tourism in the 20th century. So, in the 20th century, during the Nisa World War and after, so pleasure travel began to expand, encouraged by the increasing wealth, curiosity, and outgoing attitudes of the people. World War I boosted the demand for international travel due to the influence of posters, the press, the cinema, radio, and television widen the knowledge and interest in travel. Diba supposedly when we talk about war, 
it's supposed to be like dangerous or it's not really that pleasing for you to travel although that is basically true pero with when you see uh, soldiers or troops going to another country and you see the country nga with like posters or press or in the cinema because like, they made war films probably or videos or, or footage of like going to another country to fight for the war it actually encourage or like more ning poke sa sa curiosity sa mga uh, people na ah, okay so that's what Hungary looks like or this is what France looks like o mga yung ano no? kaya makita man mo sa mga posters sa television uh, especially when they show videos of uh, soldiers no going to war so bili lang pagkita katong mga messy parts nga katong na ane eh, ko ano na anadre patay patay o dili pod okay katorang mga ko ana kanang murag uh, for example uh, na video nga march sila dito or naabot sila ani nga lugar and then after world war forms of travel began to change radically the railway declined as means of travel with the introduction of the motor car so um, this is actually invented the motor car was invented so that when we transport or when they transport rather when they transport their ammo resources or um guns no sa mga soldiers for war dili na makinahanglan sa train nga di man naka access ang train og kanang mga sudlonon nga lugar di ba so they had to develop a Oh, they had to develop a a different kind of transportation that can go to different places without relying on railway no? or some mga train tracks. So, more na motor car. Sa time ganyan to, mabitaw na siya class nga. The jeepney is so popular here in the Philippines because it used to be a surplus. It it used to be a surplus of the koan, uh, world war. So, many surplus extra no or kanang sobra pagira so they utilize jeepneys to transport guns ammo resources to soldiers no and then they naman na siya nimo madala sa abroad gibili nila so kita mga pinoy ato ang gihimo siya into public transport which is the original ko hundred sa jeepney is intended for war okay easy uh, to easily mob- mobilize the soldiers from one place to another. Now, because of this, nakita nila nga, it's convenient to travel through motor car. You don't have to re- rely on train tracks. Kay di ba, kumuhunong ang train tracks, di na kutob ang train. Kay mo na ang means na muagi siya. Di pa jud ka og mga sudlunon nga areas ang train. Unlike sa motor car, you can go basically anywhere. So, motorized transport improved road conditions and it led to the popularity of seaside tours. Usually, they built roads near the sea or coastal because it's easier. No? At the same time, um, dili po siya, grabe po ang travel. No? Like, for example, mas dali ka niyong biyahe kung magpa-coastal pa ba kolod compared to Don Salvador. Kito nga so, no? kay mountainside man. Kaya sa seaside nga, koan lang. Um, di na magsaka, di na mag-naog ang vehicle. And then, World War II also led to an increased interest in travel. The war introduced co- uh, combatants not only to new countries but to new continents. Another outcome of the war was the progress of the aircraft technology. So air travel had become more comfortable, safer, faster, and cheaper in other forms of transport. So syempre, air travel was rampant during the war because it's easy for them to drop uh, like bombs baron or to drop again resources firepower through air and again because of that no they decided not only to make air travel as like means for war but also for public transport to conveniently and efficiently tra- uh, transport people from one place to another faster and more comfortable than land travel so it was actually the boeing 707 um that was first introduced no, for air travel. So usually, even here in the Philippines, Philippine Airlines, we most of the aircrafts, they make use of Boeing jets. 
Okay, sometimes mag-change, change pa ganina ang number no, but the same kind of aircraft, they always make use of Boeing. Although, there's also a controversy that Boeing planes can sometimes be prone to uh, airplane crashes. Pero, when you look at it, no, other pilots would prefer the Boeing aircrafts. Dili ni siya para sa Philippine Airlines. Ang Boeing ha, ang airlines are different from aircraft or classes sa plane. So, ang Philippine Airlines, nagamit sila o Boeing na aircraft or classes sa plane because pilots would prefer it. It's easier to to care. Hindi mo siya carrying a pass. Ano, but, but to to pilot. Oh, it's easy for pilots to pilot the the aircraft because gaan no uh, maybe be, because they make use of lightweight lightweight materials pero mo po lagi na no prone daw ko no sa crashes but anyway if you think about it it's safer to travel in the air kay few lang ang records of fatality or mga disgrasya sa um uh, through airplane pero ang nakakuha lang po few lang gani ang disgrasya sa airplane Less rapod, gamay rapod ang ilahang survival rate. Siyempre, layo ko kayo nagod sa babaw po gano'n sa kuwan. Napa na sa langit, no? So, muna siya. It, it's fewer lang, less ang ang risk sa plane. Although, if you think about it, it's high risk man rapon. Pero, less ang accidents rather. Less ang accidents sa plane. Pero, grabe po ang ilahang... Uh, fatality because lower lang ang survival rate. So, after the post-war recovery years, there was an increase in private car ownership and a decrease in sea travel because they realized that it's far more faster and far more comfortable to travel by air. So, road to improvements brought more distant resorts closer to major cities and there's also an increase in discretionary income and leisure time. So, in this century, there were a lot of labor negotiations, na ano mga, ko ano, labor unions, and then there is social legislation. So, daghana og ka ng mga holidays, mga uh, incentivized travel that would also benefit the employees to increase their morale. So, that is why there is also an increase in travel because they Basically, employers gave them an opportunity to travel more, no, and have leisure time. Gone were the days nga gina gina patrabaho jud ug tama ng empleyado. So, uh, with the twentieth century, daghan na og mga opportunities to travel. Governments have also created more vacation time by incorporating isolated public holidays into familiar long weekends. So, muna itong na-experience, no? Like, sa Monday siya gibutang instead of Sunday, so that ma three days na siya, there'll be a long weekend. Or, for example, wala po ang Friday until Monday, so instead na Thursday siya ibutang, then mag-jutig Friday, para mahimo siya long weekend, gibalhin siya ang Friday. Okay, so mo po na, no, because of the long weekend, it provides opportunity for people to be encouraged to travel. So, business travel flourish leading to conference and incentive travel. Okay, we will take a short break for a while, just 10 to 15 minutes. Probably, we can come back by... Kung alam siguro. Kung na po kayo ang... Okay, we can come back by 6.50. 10 minutes before 7. Let us take a short break first. And then we can continue. When you come back, we will continue with the origin of the tourism in the Philippines. So, probably you can come back by 6.45 or 6.50. Okay, the sooner the better. Okay. 